Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, we're going to be looking at how to build a data flip-flop and a JK flip-flop. These are really important circuits to understand how to build. As you probably know, right now we are working on building a 4-bit computer using individual transistors, and then we're going to be building artificial neurons as we work our way towards creating non-biological human consciousness. Let's get to it. In the last video, we talked about an SR latch, a gated SR latch, and a data latch. We ended with this data latch, and we said that it is identical to a data flip-flop, except for this input right here is an enable input instead of an edge-triggered clock pulse for the data flip-flop. Real quick for review, whenever you press this button on a data latch, the output turns on, and whenever you release the button, the output turns off. The only way to get the output to latch is if while you're pressing this button, you remove the enable pin, and then whenever you release the button, the output will stay on. Now I'm going to show you how to turn this data latch into a data flip-flop. So up here we have an A-stable multivibrator. This is a trigger, and this is our data latch. The output from the A-stable multivibrator is going into the input of the trigger, and then the output of the trigger is going into our enable input of our data latch. Well, it's actually not the enable input, it's actually our clock input. So now our data latch is officially a data flip-flop because it's receiving a clock input. Whenever I press this button, the output turns on, and whenever I release the button, the output turns off. But you'll notice that there was a delay. There was a delay because it doesn't actually change values even whenever the data button is pushed down until it receives a clock input. Here is the circuit diagram for the data flip-flop. This is the trigger, which is right here, and this is the data flip-flop. But here we actually have the output of our data flip-flop going into the data input slot. We can do this by connecting a jumper from our output into our data input slot. And now you'll notice that our output is turning on and off. And it's actually turning on and off in sync with our clock. So if you look, we have one, two, three, off. One, two, three, off. So this circuit is actually counting just like the first two bits of our binary counter. We are going to talk about how this JK flip-flop works shortly, but first let's talk about how the triggers work. This yellow waveform on our oscilloscope is our clock output, and this purple waveform is our triggered output. Right now our oscilloscope is set at one millisecond per division, so we're gonna have to zoom way in in order to better see our triggered output. So we have to go all the way to 500 nanoseconds per division. And now we can see that our triggered output, which is the purple line, is a nice square wave. We can see that as soon as our clock goes high, almost immediately our triggered output turns on. So now let's look at how we created this 500 nanosecond pulse, which is our triggered output. One way to build a trigger is with an AND gate and an inverter. If this clock input is off, our AND gate will be off and our output will be off. However, if this clock input is a one, we will have a one here, a one here, and a zero here because on the opposite side of the inverter, it will be off. So in theory, this output will always be off. However, in reality, this inverter will actually stay on for a very short duration as soon as this clock input comes on. So we'll actually get a really short pulse. So short that this won't actually work with just one inverter. However, if we use seven inverters and an AND gate, this will work because there'll actually be some substantial delay it's still going to be really, really small. With seven inverters, it's usually around 400 nanoseconds. And actually for the JK flip-flop, we actually needed to use nine inverters, so our delay was around 500 nanoseconds. Let's look at how this is built. So this circuit right here is our trigger. These three transistors are our AND gate, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These nine transistors are our inverters. The inverted output from our clock gets fed over to one of the inputs of our AND gate, and then via this red wire, it goes over to our first inverter, and then it goes through all of the inverters, and then the output gets sent into the input of the data flip-flop. Now I hooked up the output of the trigger and the output of this data flip-flop to the oscilloscope. 
And right here we can see the waveform. The purple waveform is the trigger output and the yellow waveform is the data flip-flop output. And you can see that shortly after this triggers, the output of the data flip-flop turns on. And if we want to, we can see how consistent this is by hitting our trigger button. And we can see that this does look pretty consistent. Now we are going to swap out this trigger that used nine inverters with this trigger that just uses one resistor and one capacitor. Right here, we can see the circuit diagram for it. We have a clock input coming into the capacitor. We are going to try two different capacitor sizes, a 680 picofarad and 100 nanofarads. The resistor is going to be a 1K resistor. So let's get this swapped over and see what it looks like. Now this is hooked up and it appears to be working. We have the inverted output from our clock going into the input of our trigger. And then we have the output of the trigger going into the input of this data flip-flop. Now let's hook this up to the oscilloscope and see what this triggered output looks like. Right now this is using the 680 picofarad capacitor. Now we have the oscilloscope hooked up for this capacitor trigger. We have one of the probes hooked up to the triggered output and the other probe hooked up to the output of the data flip-flop. If we look at our waveforms, we can see that the purple waveform is our triggered output and the yellow waveform is the output of our data flip-flop. And this looks similar to the output with the inverters. If we look at our scale here, we can see that we are set at 500 nanoseconds per division. So if we actually look at that purple waveform or the triggered output, it actually looks like it's not a nice clean square wave. The actual total length of the waveform is actually probably more like 1500 nanoseconds instead of 500, but we can see that it actually stays square long enough to make the output work properly. The output only gets triggered once, and this does work. So even though it's not super pretty, this capacitor and resistor does work as a trigger for this data flip-flop. Now we're actually going to swap the capacitor out. So we were currently using a 680 picofarad capacitor, but we're gonna go a lot larger. We're gonna to go to a 100 nanofarad capacitor, and we're going to see what happens to this output. Now the data flip-flop is hooked up with the larger 100 nanofarad capacitor. And if we look, it appears the output is working correct, but let's take a look at it on the oscilloscope. So if we look at it on the oscilloscope, it doesn't look quite right. Our triggered output is purple, and you can see that it, it has some problems. And right now we are at 500 nanoseconds per division, so we're gonna have to zoom out a lot more than that in order to be able to see this properly. So let's try and go to 10 microseconds, and we'll trigger our scope, and we can see that there are some issues. So our triggered output goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then our actual output doesn't change until towards the end, and it just sort of turns off a whole bunch of times, on, off, on, off, on, off, before it does settle down into making the right transition. So even though this looks like it's working properly, there are definitely some issues with it. It's actually kind of interesting that it normally works properly, because this is a type of racing condition where our output is toggling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and you would think that every other time it would not change states. So it's important whenever you're building these triggers with a capacitor and a resistor that you check the output on an oscilloscope and you wanna make sure that you don't have issues like this. The main solution is to make sure that your trigger pulse duration is really short. Somewhere around 500 nanoseconds seems to be a good pulse duration and this was achieved with the 680 picofarad capacitor. Now we're going to talk about the JK flip-flop. It is built using four NAND gates. These two NAND gates are three input NAND gates, and what this means is that it's built with three transistors. This is a two input NAND gate, and the only difference is that this one has a third transistor. The inputs to this NAND gate are just the base of each one of the transistors. The JK flip-flop name means that one of the inputs is J and one of them is K. And actually, in all of the SR latches, we used to have set down here and reset here, but
but for the JK flip-flop, it is the opposite. The set is up here, and that is the J, and the reset is on the bottom, and that is K. And we can see if we press set, our output turns on, and if we press reset, our output turns off. Right now, our enable or clock input is enabled, and this is done by having this resistor right here connected to the base of this transistor. And it also feeds down via this red wire into the base of this transistor. And that is why this is able to toggle whenever we press set and reset. This circuit diagram shows the current state of our circuit. And this one shows what happens whenever we press set or whenever we press J. So let's do that. We'll press J and we see that our output was off and now our output is on. Well, why exactly did that happen? Well, whenever we press J, the enable input is on, J is on, and we had this output here turning this last pin on. So all three inputs to this NAND gate are on, and anytime we have all the inputs on to a NAND gate, the output is going to be off. So this output was off, and previously this one was on, so we had one that was on and one that was off, so that turns this output on. So now this output turns on, and this output coming out of this NAND gate is also on, so this output turns off. So that is why this output is now on. Get ready, because you're about to really understand how this JK flip-flop works. So for our enable or our clock input, we have it set to enable. That's because this resistor right here is going into the base of this transistor and into the base of this transistor. And what this means is if we press set, our output will turn on, and if we press reset, our output will turn off. And this is more like a JK latch, where we control the output with these push button switches. But we want to be able to control the output with the clock. So we'll actually pull out this enable pin and we will feed in our clock input. We'll do this by connecting this blue wire to our clock input. So now our output's coming from our clock into our trigger and from our trigger into our JK flip-flop. And now we'll see if we press reset, it will reset. And if we press set, it will set. But notice that from the time I push the button till the time it actually switches over, there's a slight delay. There's a slight delay because it doesn't officially switch until it receives the enable from the clock. So that is why you're seeing this slight delay. The other really cool thing about this JK flip-flop is if you set the J to one and the K to one, which means you push down both of these switches, it will toggle back and forth. And that's the real beauty of the JK flip-flop. We can actually set our output by pressing set or by pressing reset, and we can also have it toggle. And all of this takes place without having to change the way the circuit is wired in any way. And that is why the JK flip-flop is really cool. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to build this circuit, which is a master-slave JK flip-flop. And I'm also going to show you how to build a master-slave data flip-flop. So if you're interested in that video, click here.